Welcome to 252 Theater's online service, a ministry of New Spring Church and Wichita, Kansas. Fun lives here, so get ready to have a great time and learn about a great big idea. That's right. A big idea is something God wants to do inside you to change the world around you. The biggest ideas are the big three. We hope after joining us online, you'll know that you can treat others the way you want to be treated, make the wise choice, and trust God no matter what. You'll get to experience fun games, skits, worship, and of course, a powerful story straight out of God's Word. More than a video, this is your chance to be a part of something amazing. So get your popcorn, crank up the volume, and get ready for incredible fun. It all starts in three, two, one. I am so excited to be with you here today because I get to share a very special, real true story from the Bible all about Jesus' very first miracle. And as a matter of fact, you guys get the opportunity to help me tell the story. Here's how this is going to work, okay? I'm going to tell the story, but then I'm going to pause. And when I pause, I'm going to come over here to my box and I'm going to pull out something from the box that will give you a clue about the next word or words that come in our story. And you guys get to tell me what comes next, okay? Do you got it? Give me a thumbs up if you're ready to go. All right. So I'm going to start off easy. So last week, we were learning all about Jesus when he was just a little... Right, when he was just a baby. And we learned all about how the angels came down and they told the shepherds about Jesus being born and how he was laying in a manger wrapped in strips of clothing. And that was such an amazing reason to celebrate. But Jesus didn't stay a baby forever. Eventually, like you, he... He grew up. You're right. But as we learned in our video earlier, there's not a whole lot in the Bible about Jesus as a kid. But there's one verse that's very special to us here at New Spring. This is from Luke 2, verse 52. And it says, Jesus became wiser and stronger. He also became more and more pleasing to God and to people. Now... I want you to think, do you know the name of this area that you're sitting in right now? This is called, what's the name? It's 252 Theater. Did you know that this place that you're sitting in right now was named after Luke 252? That's why we named it. Because our hope as a church for you guys is that you will be just like Jesus and become wiser and stronger and more pleasing to God and people. So that's how we got the name for this theater. Well, we're going to kind of fast forward 30 years until Jesus is a full-grown adult. And he knows that it's time to start going out into the world to tell people about why he came to earth, how he came to earth to save us. But before he starts his ministry, there's something very important that he has to do. He has to go get baptized. You're right. If you've been baptized here before, you know that this is the shirt that, that they wear when they get baptized. I doubt Jesus had a pretty cool shirt like this, but he got baptized. He went down to see his cousin, John, who was baptizing people in the Jordan River and telling them that a Savior was coming. And so Jesus goes to John, and he says, John, I need you to baptize me. And John is like, whoa, whoa. No, I am not even fit to untie your sandals. But Jesus assures John and says, this is the way it has to be. This is God's plan. I need you to baptize me. So John baptizes Jesus, and God's spirit comes down like a dove and lands on him, and God says this. This is from Matthew chapter 3, verse 17. God says, this is my son and I love him. I am very pleased with him. I hope someday God can say that about me too, that I'm his daughter, and he loves me, and he's very happy with me. And I hope he says that about all of you too. 
Well, after this, Jesus starts calling his disciples. Those are his friends and his helpers that are going to help him tell people about why he came to earth and how he came to save the earth. And, um, but a lot of people still really don't know a lot about him. That's about to change. And because Jesus is going to do something very special. Now, he's going to go to a very special celebration. Let's see if you can guess which this is. Dun, dun, dun. Right. He's going to go to a wedding in a town called Cana in Galilee. And he's there with his mother, Mary. Okay. Now, if you've never been to a wedding before, usually there's a ceremony where the bride and the groom, they get married. But then after that ceremony, there's a huge celebration. It's a giant party and people are dancing and they're talking and they're laughing and they're having lots of fun. But sometimes when you're dancing and laughing and having lots of fun, you can get very thirsty. So Mary was thirsty and she went back to where the servants were to get some... <laughs> this is soda. <laughs> now, they didn't have soda. They didn't have grape soda back then, okay? What they had was wine. Um, back a long time ago, the water wasn't always very clean. Sometimes there were germs and things in the water that would make people pretty sick. So instead of water, sometimes they would drink wine. It would be similar to us drinking soda today, okay? So for our story, this is going to represent the wine. So Mary goes back, and she's asking the servants if she could have some wine, but she notices something. All of the jars of wine are Every last one is empty. And she knows that this means that the celebration is probably going to have to be over, right? Because people are going to be thirsty, and if they're thirsty and there's nothing to drink, they're just going to leave. And she doesn't want that to happen. So she calls Jesus over, and this is what she says to Jesus. This is in John chapter 2, verses 3 and 4. She says, they have no more wine. And Jesus looks at her, and this is what he says. Dear woman, why are you telling me about this? Jesus replied. The time for me to show who I really am isn't here yet. So Mary knows that Jesus can do amazing things. Most moms know what their kids are capable of. She knew he was capable to do something amazing and that he could solve the problem of them not having any wine. But at first, Jesus is like, mm, I'm not ready for that. But Mary... She's a smart woman. She goes and she tells the servants. She says, hey, guys, I want you to stay next to Jesus, and I want you to do whatever he says. And then she walks away. And so Jesus is back there with the servants, and he's standing there for a little bit, and he sees six huge jars. Jars, clay jars. Actually, they were even bigger than this, probably about five times bigger than this. It's said that they held 20 to 30 gallons of water. It was for a special ceremony they did for washing feet. And so Jesus saw these huge jars, and he tells the servants to go and fill them with water. He says, go fill these jars with water. So they're thinking, hmm, that's odd, but they go do it anyways. And they fill the jars with water. They bring the jars back, and this is what Jesus says to them next. This is in John chapter 2, verse 8. He says, now dip some out and take it to the person in charge of the dinner. So there was a person who was throwing this dinner. And Jesus says, take that water, take some out, and go give it to that person. Do you think the person in charge of the dinner is going to be real happy to get some water? I don't know. Let's see. So they, the servants, they take the water to the person in charge. And he starts to drink the water. But instead of water, he tastes wine. Jesus turned the water into 
wine. And not just any wine, because here's what the person in charge says. This is in, Luke, in John chapter 2, verse 10. He says, you have saved the best until now. So Jesus turned it into the very best wine, not just anything. He turned it into the best, which is why we have our bottom line for today. Jesus showed us how to have joy. Will you say that with me? Jesus showed us how to have joy. Because Jesus showed us how to have joy, we can celebrate. We can celebrate big things like winning a tournament, or we can celebrate little things like a flower blooming or a smile from our best friend. And this is all because Jesus wants us to have joy. And not only that, but he wants us to have the very best that there is. So with that, I want you to... I want to pray for you guys. So close your eyes, bow your heads, put your hands together, and let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this wonderful day. Thank you for a church as New Spring is that looks for, out for our children and hopes to bring them up closer to you. Lord, thank you for sending Jesus to our world, and thank you for having him show us how to have joy. Please help us to remember to celebrate big things and small things. Help us not to look too quickly past all of the small, little, wonderful things that you do for us in this life. Lord, thank you so much for this day, and it's in your name we pray. Amen.